Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to another episode of the 54321 Countdown Show. Um, I am Uba as always. Thank you for joining me here uh, on Ill Minded Media's YouTube channel. This, is, of course, is your ultimate destination for insightful commentary on movies, television, and music. Uh, I hope you got the chance to check out our last episode where we got to run down some of my favorite Easter eggs in all of movies, which is very, very cool. I recommend it to everybody out there who are into the behind the scenes kind of stuff. Check it out. Uh, today, we're going to be keeping it in the film family. We're going to be talking about comic book movies. That's something that I love. You guys love. A lot of people love. Um, we're going to be talking about more specifically my top five most underrated comic book slash graphic novel movie adaptations. Now, um, we are on a precipice of the summer blockbuster season, which has been extended. You know, we're getting Star Wars in December. We got uh, Fast and the Furious in March. But the prime months, that's May, June, and July, have always been very, very important to studios, critics, and fans alike. Uh, and the most important part of that season uh, the most important aspect of that season, at least in the last decade or so, have been comic book movies. Um, and so it is the purpose of this show today. It is my um, kind of reasoning for being here to tell you guys about some of the most underrated comic book movies that came out in years prior. Some movies that you guys should check out in the meantime. Um, we're going to start hot. We're going to jump right into it and go back to the year of 2012. A little movie named Dread came out, um, starring Carl Urban. It was adapted from John Wagner and Carlos Esquera's uh, work in the anthology series 2000 AD, where we have this futuristic world where law enforcement is basically um, consistent and enforced by judges who are placed police and cops. They are judge, jury, and executioners. They get the chance and the power to decide whether a criminal, be it he or she, lives or dies. Um, so it's a really warped commentary on you know the world that we live in right now. Cool stuff. Uh, the 1995 adaptation, which starred Sylvester Stallone in his prime, um, didn't do so well. It kind of shitted on uh, the entire source material. And in my opinion, hurt this movie. Uh, didn't make its money back, this 2012 adaptation, even though it was very, very faithful. It was... Gritty, it was rated R, so you had a lot of violence. Um, you also had Carl Urban, who played uh, Judge Dredd, the titular character, uh, who never took off his helmet, which is something that's very, very big to hardcore fans of the graphic novel. The helmet basically protects the reader or viewer from the humanity of the judges, which is the point of the world that you know these characters live in. Uh, these guys are tools of law enforcement. They're not meant to be looked at as human beings. So uh, the fact that Carl Urban kept his max, his helmet on, excuse me, was really cool. We also got one of the most underrated uh, comic book villains of all time, played by Lena Headley. Uh, her name was Mama, I believe, the main drug pusher for a great, cool looking drug called Slow Mo. Uh, the 3D aspect of this movie really took advantage of the effects of said drug. So he had a lot of cool things in his movie, didn't make its money back, but you know got great word of mouth, um, and it's looked upon finally now by many people. Um, so let's get to our next pick, which is 2002's Road to Perdition. Uh, this is Tom Hanks, who usually plays good guys. He plays a lot of good guys, almost uh, completely, um, but this is the closest you'll ever see to him playing a bad guy. He essentially is a goon in this movie. He is a mob enforcer. This movie takes place in uh, the Depression era. Uh, so we have Al Capone. We have the Prohibition. And Tom, Hank Tom Hanks, I'm sorry, is Michael Sullivan, who is on the run with his son after his son witnesses a mob hit. And one of the underbosses of Al Capone decides that it's cost effective to take Tom Hanks, his son, and his entire family out. So Tom Hanks and his son survive, and they're on the run, and they're also on a quest for revenge. Um, this movie does a lot of things well. It stars, like I said, Tom Hanks. We have Daniel Craig. We have Jude Law and Paul Newman in his last live-action feature film appearance. 
Um, so it has a lot of things working for it. The thing that really stuck out for me is um, the incredible cinematography. Now, this is one of the most beautiful films ever made, bar none. The cinematographer, the late Conrad L. Hall, won, um, after he passed, of course, he won an Academy Award for Best Cinematography, and for good reason. You have a lot of wide shots that show the environment, show the, you know, the beach, the grass, the wind. Um, there's very minimal dialogue, and the imagery and the environments are used to convey the story and emotion, and it does so very, very well. This movie explores the relationship between father and son, and it explores the consequences of violence. Um, so it does stuff really, really well. For fans of graphic novels, you'll like it. If you're a fan of mob movies, you'll like it. You know, it kind of has that uh, Boardwalk Empire flavor. So check it out. Um, our next pick, our next hit on this list is The Crow, which came out in 1994, uh, directed by Alex Proyas, adapted the James O. Barr uh, graphic novel series. Uh, of course, this is about Eric Draven, a rock star musician who, alongside with his fiance, was brutally murdered by a gang of thugs. We have Eric returning from the dead to take his revenge. Um, Screen Rant actually had a great take on the character of the crow, one of the most fascinating characters in all of comic books, in my opinion, as a cross between Kurt Cobain and Bruce Wayne. This, of course, features or refers to his um, when he's not you know, stalking his prey, he has a kind of tendency to hurt himself and self-mutilate himself because of his tragic past and his dark past. Speaking of darkness, this is the movie, this is the launching pad for dark and gritty superhero movies. Um, at least as to what you see now with Dark Knight and others. Um, very, very cool stuff. Great videos, great visuals and great audio. This actually put the metal music scene on the map. And it influenced a lot of people. You know, if you're a wrestling fan, you notice that one of the best wrestlers of all time, The Sting, uh, changed his character to reflect that of the makeup and, you know, the attire of Brandon Lee's crow. You also had a number of Joker uh, takes, which is no doubt uh, influenced by, by this movie as well. So check it out. Great, great stuff. Um, number two, we're nearing the end here. We have Edge of Tomorrow, which came out in 2014, crappy name, crappy title. It's kind of gave and confused a lot of people. And it gave the impression of a soap opera. And it came off of the back of Tom Cruise, who was the main star of this film. It came off of the back of Oblivion, which wasn't received well. It's kind of boring. Um, but this movie, of course, it stars Tom Cruise. We have the late Bill Paxson. We have um, Emily Blunt, who, in my opinion, um, stars as one of the best female action heroes alongside Ellen Ripley from the Alien franchise, alongside Sarah O'Connor from the Terminator franchise. Emily Blunt kills it in this movie, and she is something to see. Um, and it's directed by Doug Lyman. It was adapted from Hiroshi's Sakura Zaka's All You Need Is Kill, a Japanese light novel. Um, it is one of the few examples of a uh, great American ad adaptation of a Japanese work. Uh, Magna in this case, especially we're coming off of the back of uh, Ghost in a Shell and movies like, you know, uh, Dragon Ball Z or Evolution, whatever that movie was called. That didn't, didn't really, really work well. This movie did. Um, it features Tom Cruise as a soldier who's fighting an intergalactic war with invading aliens. And he dies at very numerous times, and he gets to live and repeat the same day over and over again. So it's, it's a cool science fiction take on something like Groundhog Day, which stars the great Bill Murray. So it's a great watch. Word of mouth really did help this movie out in the end, and it sold a lot through video sales and kind of made his money back, I believe. Um, but it's a great watch. You guys should check it out if you haven't. Now, the last movie on this list is 2005's, I believe. It came out in 2005. It is called The History of Violence. In my opinion, is the most surprising watch in recent memory for me. Um, this stars Viggo Mortensen, who a lot of you may know from Lord of the Rings. We have Maria Bello. We have Ed Harris, one of my favorite character actors of all time. You uh, probably know him from The Rock. Um, and William Hurt, who won, or 
he didn't win, but he was nominated for uh, Best Supporting Actor for his uh, role here, which is short but very, very powerful. Um, this was adapted from the 1997 graphic novel by John Wagner and Vince Locke. Um, a fun fact that LA Times has this movie as the last major Hollywood featured film to be adapted or transferred or transformed into VHS. So there's that. Um, but this is a great film noir. You know, it's a great storytelling, powerful performances. We have Vigo as Tom Stahl, a mild mannered uh, diner owner who stops an attempted robbery and by doing so triggers off a whole line of events that leads to him learning a lot more about himself than he had ever wished for. We find out about his past through interactions with different very, very interesting characters. If you haven't seen the movie, if you you know are unfamiliar with the comic book, I suggest you go into this movie cold because we have you know tons of twists and turns and secrets that come out because of this one scene. You know, he starts off as a local hero and turns into something very, very different. Uh, this movie was directed by the incredible Dave, uh, David Cronenberg. Um, and uh, this movie actually preceded another great team up between Vigo and, and, and Cronenberg in Eastern Promises, one of my uh, another underrated kind of cult classic to me. But that's it, I believe. We've run down my top five underrated comic book or graphic novel adaptations to film. And with that, we've come to the end of another great episode of the 54321 Countdown Show. The most important question, as always, is what you guys think are some of the most underrated comic book movies of all time. Now, um, if you like this video, click that like button, share this video, and subscribe to our channel by clicking the button after this video or in our homepage. Uh, thank you once again for joining me here. Follow me and Ill Minded Media all over social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter just to keep updated with what we're doing next. Thank you once again. Take care and peace.